So, how did nationalism cause World War I? Uh, specifically, there was an area of intense nationalism in Europe, uh, and that area was a region of southeastern Europe called the Balkan Peninsula. Um, and that area was in large part controlled by an empire, in this case, the Austrian Empire. Um, the Austrian Empire, at the point in time that we're talking about, in the 1800s and the early 1900s, the Austrian Empire controlled the most diverse population of any empire in Europe. And I'll show that to you in a map in a second. Um, the Austrian Empire was ruled by the Austrian nation. Now, the Austrian people themselves, the people from the actual area of Austria, are German-speaking Roman Catholic people, right? But within the Austrian Empire, the vast majority of the population was not German-speaking and not Roman Catholic. Um, we'll describe that in a little bit more detail in a second. Um, so the people who lived in the Austrian territory, for the most part, were not actual Austrians. And as a result, the people in the area of the Balkan Peninsula developed nationalist beliefs in order to try and fight back against Austrian control. They wanted to rule themselves, right? Um, not all of the Balkan Peninsula was controlled by Austria, however. There were independent countries in that part of Europe, the most powerful of which, although it was not a very powerful country, it was a fairly small country, the most powerful independent country in that area was Serbia. And Serbia is going to be quite angry at Austria because they feel that Austria, the Austrian Empire, is exerting its control over people who should rightly be under the control of Serbia because they speak the Serbian language, they believe in the Serbian Orthodox Christianity, which is different than Catholicism, um, and they felt that those people and the lands in which they lived should belong to the Serbian government, not the Austrian one. And obviously when you have two countries upset about um, a territory, that could result in a violent conflict. Now, to make all these matters worse, more violent, more dangerous, right, um, is Russia and Russian involvement. If it came to a war between Austria and Serbia, that war would be very quickly won at this time by Austria. Serbia is a small country, although they are independent, and they are a proud people, they would be crushed by the Austrian Empire simply because they just have so much more money, so many more resources. But when you get Russia into the mix, it makes things a lot more complicated. Russia shares a fairly similar culture with the Serbians, um, which we'll go into in a little bit more detail in a moment. Um, so Russia felt fairly close to the Serbian cause and to the cause of nationalism in this part of Europe in general. Not to mention, Russia was also uh, quite angry at Austria for reasons which we'll get into later as well. Let's take a look at the Austrian Empire here. As mentioned, the, Ger the Austrian Empire, which had its capital in this city here, Vienna, right? The Austrian people themselves are German-speaking Roman Catholic people. But you could see in the borders of the very massive Austrian Empire, only this small corner of it, where you see it's colored in red, were actual Austrians by nation, right? The rest of the Austrian Empire was controlled, or not controlled, sorry, was made up of many different nations, right? The green are Hungarians. This tan area, which I wish this black bar wasn't in the way, these are going to be people who are of Serbian background, right? Um, the weird kind of grayish brown color here, these are Slovenes. The brown is Slovaks. The purple are Polish people. The yellow golden color here 
is Ukrainians. This orange color are Romanians, right? So in this border of the Austrian Empire, you have many different groups of people with their own unique languages, their own unique religions, their own unique cultures and histories, and none of them want to be ruled by the German Austrians. You see um, down here, below the Austrian Empire, right, is the country of Serbia. The Serbians, as mentioned, are an independent, they have an independent country, Serbia, down here. But if you look over here, in this area that's labeled Croatia, if this black bar would go away, you would see that the people who lived in this area are going to be, um, in large part, Serbian speaking, Serbian culture, and Serbia is going to want to take this area, this whole area right here, away from Austria. Now you can see why that might have been a little bit of an issue. Imperialism was another cause of the war, which I won't really go too much into because we've studied imperialism at length. It was what we studied before we left. Um, and because we've studied it, the reasons why this would be a point of conflict are somewhat obvious, right? Uh, we know that during this period of time, countries in Europe, as well as the United States, were involved with taking over other parts of the world, specifically in Africa and Asia, and putting those areas under the control of their governments. When your government takes over territory that doesn't naturally belong to it, that's called imperialism, making an empire, right? And the reasons why this was happening during this period of time, during the late 19th and early 20th centuries, was because of the Industrial Revolution, right? Uh, and the demands of the new industrial economies, where people needed new resources that maybe only these new territories would have. And they also wanted places to sell their new products um, in order to make more money. Um, and when it comes to making money, and when it comes to getting resources, Countries all want to do that. All countries want to make money. All countries want to be able to sell things and buy things um, and have the right to do that. Um, and when it comes to that, it's going to be a point of conflict between these countries, right? When it comes to their wallet, every country wants to be the richest. And it looks like I've got